Hello Drone Racers, I'm Mark and today on Drone Racer 101 we're going to set up the Baby Hawk R Pro. I'll have a separate video where I will uh, actually take a look at all the components and go fly it. But on this video, we're just going to go through the setup because depending on when you get it, you probably don't want to fly it right out of the box. So this is the Free Sky version. So I'm going to go through setting up the radio because you may or may not have a model you can already use with this. And then we'll go through setting it up in beta flight, which should be pretty easy but complicated. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go with that. So first, just in case you need to, I'll show you how I set up a model for this. This is gonna be a D8 model. Welcome to OpenTX. The FreeSky receiver that this comes with is just a D8. So I'll hold right stick. You can skip this part if you've already done this before. I don't think I have any D8s there. I have XMs, XSRs, R9s, lots of them. Here I'll press and hold down and set up a new D8 model. This is a multi-rotor. So I use my radio as T-A-E-R. So we have channel one, which is throttle. Channel two, so the A actually stands for ailerons, which is the equivalent of roll on channel two. E stands for elevator, which is the equivalent of pitch. And yaw equals R, the rudder. So that's what T-A-E-R stands for, in case you haven't seen that before. There we go, long press to confirm. So I'm actually gonna call this D8 because I might use this with other D8 models. There, I still have a few of them out there. Okay, there we go, D8RX, that works. So I actually go up here through, so we're gonna skip trainer for now. I'm gonna go up to internal RF. I'm gonna change this to D8, there we go. So I don't have to set a fail safe with D8. I'm gonna make sure I'm on the internal antenna. So I'll exit here and I'll go through over to inputs. I'll do the same inputs I do over and over every time. I use my switch here as my arm. I use this switch for my modes. I use this switch as my buzzer. And this is my flip over after crash. So there's the inputs. I also need to go over to mixer and just go in and then exit. This will default to using the same input channel as you have listed. So if I'm on channel eight, it uses input eight by default, which is what I want. Okay, there we go. That's really all I need to do on my radio. Easy to go. Okay, now we'll plug this in and take a look and see what comes on it. So here we go. Mine came with firmware 332, which you do not want for this. Emacs says run this on 35. So that's what we're gonna do first. I'm not even gonna save the config and I will show you why in just a minute. I am going to confirm the flight controller though. So this is a Maytech F405, okay. That's easy to remember. So exit, go to firmware flasher. So we'll find the Maytech F405. We'll go ahead and do 351 in this case, full chip erase, load firmware online, flash firmware, flash firmware. Okay, so it failed. So I'm gonna try it again. I'm on F4. Now we'll just try, I just unplugged it, plugged it back in. There we go. It did switch to DFU mode this time properly for me. I didn't have to do anything. Programming successful, we'll reboot it. Programming successful, we'll reboot it. Now I've not used the battery at all yet. I'm just using USB power right now. So we will reconnect. There we go. Now we're on 351. Now we have a brand new default uh, basic config. So now we're actually gonna go to Emacs's website. I will post a link for this down below. This is the Emacs page for the Baby Hawk R Pro. And what they have done is build a config for us. So they say first batch might have shipped with 3.3. Depending on when you're seeing this, you may not have 3.3, you may already be on 3.5. So what they've done here very conveniently is just make us a dump file. So we've got it here just ready to go. So control A is not gonna work for me. I'm gonna hit there because it selected too much. I will not hit the save, I wanna make sure it works. So here I'm on control C, go back to beta flight. I'll go to the CLI. Control V, enter. And this is all the predefined configuration they want on this. They've done a lot of testing. That's one nice thing about Emacs. They really go the extra mile to make sure your configuration, everything is really, really good. So we'll wait for this all to enter. They've done all the PID tuning. You no need to ask, what PIDs do you use? So we'll just save it here. That looks like that all went well. It will reboot automatically. Now we should be good to go. Let's take a look and see what we've got. 
ports. We're already set UART 2. There are a lot of UARTs available on this. That's really, really nice. Black box logging is already turned on. Run cam device for the camera already looks like it's wired. TBS smart audio. Our UART 2 is used for our receiver. DSHOT 600, one thing I am going to turn on is motor stop. I always use motor stop. Uh, idle motors all the way up on seven, interesting. Here for system configuration, we're on 32K, 16K, wow. I am going to turn on the accelerometer. We'll see if it can handle it. Ooh, CPU load. All right, so normally I like to have angle mode available, angle and horizon, but they, they don't want it in this case, in which case I'm gonna go back and turn off motor stop. So I am not going to use angle mode on this. They have the frequencies turned way up and we are already at 50% load. So I am not going to mess with that. If I turn on the accelerometer, it might just be too much. So in this case, air mode is fine. Anti-gravity dynamic filters, those all look good. Warnings have already been reset from the default. Those look good. PIDs they have set, super rates are on 0.8, which I always like. Let's see what they did for the filters. So they've turned off the notch filters. All of them, so the low pass filters are on, the notch filters are off. Receiver I've not bound yet, so that's not gonna do anything. Modes here I will have to set up. Arm, uh, so yeah, arm I want on one. Hmm, interesting, so normally I would set up modes on my second switch, but I'm really just in acro mode in this case. My aux two isn't going to do anything. That's, this is gonna mess with my head. We'll go down and set Flip over after crash to aux 4, where I always have it, and then save. OSD, let's see what they've got. It's probably okay. I do like the crosshairs. Everything else looks okay. I see voltage. The one thing I don't see that I always want because it's amazing. Average cell voltage, especially in this case, I fly mostly 4S, but I'm gonna fly 3S. I'm also gonna turn on warnings. So with the average cell voltage, when I'm switching around between different batteries, 2S, 3S, 4S, I don't have to do math in my head. And I talk while I fly, and the last thing I wanna do is do math at the same time. So we'll save that. We should be good to go. Now we need to set it up and bind it with the radio. So if you look here, you can see the receiver is not lit up off of USB. So I'm gonna to have to power that via battery to get this bound. The bind switch is way up there. You see it right there? Right there. So I'm gonna freak some people out. So I'm definitely gonna use my smoke stopper for that. I've got a 3S battery on here. I actually like to use batteries at storage voltage. This is just right out of storage. I have an adapter here to connect it to my smoke stopper with the XT60. And then I have an XT30 to connect it back into the model. So that will let me connect this in here to the model. Now I can use the switch to arm it. Ooh, it's bright. But the problem is I've gotta be pushing that button at the same time. So I'm gonna set this up here, but that's why I use the switch. It's way, way easier with the switch. If you don't have one of these, I definitely recommend you build one. There's a link up in the corner on uh, how to do that. Thank, thank you, Amber. So I don't have anything plastic small enough to get in there and hit that button. So I'm actually going to use a screwdriver that I've got. Should be pretty easy to press that though. There we go. Oh yeah, easy to push that down, get it in place. I don't. I just don't wanna take the top off. Not just for this. There we go, we have a solid green light on there. So I will go back into my RX and go up to bind. And there we go. So the red light next to the green light started flashing once I was bound. So I'll exit there, turn this off, turn it back on. It's interesting, it still just shows a green light. So, so if I arm it, ooh, so there we are with air mode. There we go, works. So that's now set to the factory recommended default. I'm gonna go out and try it and you can see my results of that in my other video, which will be linked down below and up in the corner. That's where I take a look at the model and we'll actually do the flight test. In this video, I just wanted to get it all set up because it's not quite as easy as some of them, especially since I did have a version running 3.3. I really didn't expect that. But if you found this useful, leave a like and a comment down below. Make sure you go watch the other video to see if I recommend this in the end. Hopefully it's better than my last Baby Hawks. Those just haven't been great, but I have high hopes for this one. So until next time, remember, hello, Drone Racers. I'm Mark, and today on Drone Racer 101, we are going to set up the Baby Hawk R Pro Plus Extreme. What's this thing called?